welcome to episode nine of the Tap Haven podcast. <laughs> Guys, we are almost at episode 10. Ah! Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty we impressive. Are, I know. We are, uh, That's pretty good. I think day nine would be proud of us. He w- today. Yes. He oh, would. is this the day nine episode? The day nine <laughs> episode. Day nine episode. Yes, sir. Oh, man. man. Yeah, we, we could easily do his 30 day project, I feel. I point. feel like we've already done it. I know. To be like, honest. We, we did it. At least I've been doing it. <laughs> hey, you're, you're here. You're here. I, I don't know. I feel like most of the people that I know right now who are doing like life transition stuff, I've been like on the grind for the past like multiple months at a time. So, oh, yeah. If you're yeah. out there killing it, congratulations. You're doing a good job. Yeah. Oh, sure. yeah. For sure. <laughs> Keep on, keep on the grindstone, man. Nah, one, man. one foot. At, what, what does he say? The, um, the first step isn't the hardest. It's the next step. And the step after that. Somebody gave me, I think it was my therapist. Uh, but he said, he gave me the quote or like the story of um, Matthew McConaughey. He was doing a college uh, speech and he's, uh, he was, asked by his uh teacher when he was 13 or something like that and asked who do you want to be when you grow up and 13 year old matthew mcconaughey says i want to be my hero and who i want to be in the future is me 10 years from now and right so yeah. great great lead up great lead into it but same teacher came to one of his events after he got had gotten older had hit his fame and everything and asked him the same question and he said the exact same thing. The me, 10 years from now, is my hero and who I want to be. Yeah. Dude, if, if that's the case, man, have you, have you read his book? Or li- Matthew McConaughey's book? Dude, you got to listen to his book. It is narrated by him. It's going to put me to sleep. I mean. <laughs> He's on, he was on the Calm app first before he did this audio book. Yeah, that doesn't, yeah, that doesn't sorry, surprise man. me. <laughs> Oh, oh man! God. By the way, Calm, feel free to sponsor. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Uh, Put me to sleep, guys. Put me to sleep. Put me to sleep. What you guys been up yeah. to? I think Eric got a gold medal. I got two. What? I got two. Yeah, I went. I went undefeated this weekend. Oh yeah. <gasps> In what? Yeah. Tell the tell the uh, listeners and watchers what you golded in. Yeah, I, so I I practice judo. I've been doing it for a few years now, and I'm doing some competitions. I'm actually training for the world championship this year. I'm gonna go to Las Vegas and do some fun stuff with that later in the year. For um for veterans, uh, I'm old. Um, <laughs> But, hold on, hold on, hold on. For veterans? What are you talking about? Context. What Eric is probably going to eventually tell you, but that I'm going to steal from his script that he has in his head already. <laughs> veterans is the line of separation that keeps you away from the crazy young kids who are trying to be, make Olympian. Yeah. And, oh. and get on the Olympian team. So veterans are people who are like, I'm good, but I don't want to commit suicide on this match right 30 plus yeah 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 our knees are going we're just we're trying to make it back home we got to work the next day but we still want to fight a little you know yeah yeah <laughs> the weekend warrior like yeah just, that's uh, just just dialed up pew, 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 really yes. hard <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I, don't, I don't know anybody who weekend warriors overseas and says yeah i've tossed like a few like russian guys over my shoulder if, like and i'm feeling pretty good you know <laughs> It was the whole world championship in Las Vegas veteran. Yes. So they, they have a seniors uh, world championship and an under 18 world championship and a veterans world championship. This one is specifically the veterans. Super proud of you, man. Yeah. Good job. Dude, it was dope. Yeah, it was our home, home tournament. So we, uh, my, the school that I practice at ran it and took gold in both my uh divisions well funny story so here we go technically i i walk up to the event and 
usually I fight in veterans and I usually do a senior division as well. And veterans is usually 30 plus. Cool. I'm above 30. Usually do veterans. At our home tournament, uh, Josh, who you both know, uh, mm -hmm. happens to put veteran at 35 plus. Now, he told me he was going to put me in the 35 plus, but he was like, ah, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll do it. But we were so swamped day of. Like, I was helping set up. Josh was running the tournament. Hannah was doing all this stuff. We were, we were busy people. Home tournament. Right. We had a lot of stuff to do, so I, it just slipped my mind. So I checked my fights. I'm re refreshing on the app, and I'm like, oh, cool. I got, wait, one fight coming up? Ugh. I was supposed to remind Josh. And so I get there. And at that point, I'm like, ah, man, I don't want to bother him. He's doing, he's got so much shit to deal with that day. I'm going to fight mm -hmm. in my one division. I'm going to be happy. So I fight in my one division. I fight a guy from a sister school of ours who was um, new, but he was really good. And then I was able to fight mm -hmm. two other guys. They were pretty good. And then I ended up winning. And I was like, yes, awesome. And then I took all my stuff off and I'm, sitting there chilling. I start helping with the tables. I start doing a little, the table actually has a screen where we have to manage what the refs are saying and it mm -hmm. updates the website and everything like that. Pushes all the updates to the app and everything. Yeah. Gotcha. So I'm hoping to run the table, do all that kind of stuff, whatever they need. You know, I like to make their life easier on tournament day. And so a little bit later, Josh is running around the, the mat, comes by me, and he's like, Eric, you want to fight? I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> way to sound like a bully. <laughs> Just I was like, yeah, I know. Hey, 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 you fight me. <laughs> no, no, but he was like, hey, you want to fight? Uh, I was I, like, I who am I fighting? I feel bad for the audience because I used to get these stories and I hadn't met Josh yet. And after you've met Josh, it makes so much sense. It makes so much sense. <laughs> Imagining him, he's like six foot five, maybe taller, kind of, he looks like a, a really good NBA player, right? Yep. I mean, not, he's, a he's, too, he's a he's, beast. He's a beast. But a he's just, he's got the biggest smile like all the time. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's awesome. But yeah, he's, he's running up. Him, like spreading out, being like, Eric. You know, reaching like 10 feet across the mat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like, you, <laughs> you want to fight? I'm like, who am I, who am I fighting? He's like, don't worry about it. You, you want to fight? You want to fight? You want to go on the mat or no? I'm like, oh, sure, dude. I'll go on the mat. No context. No, no context. <laughs> and so I'm going over and sitting next to this guy and he's like, are you Bill? I'm like. No. God, dude. So it turns <laughs> do I look out. Like a fucking you? Yeah. <laughs> you just punched him in the face. And that's where the story goes. That's where the fight ends. <laughs> Took him out before we got on the mat. No. Oh, my God. So, How dare so, you fucking call me Bill? <laughs> apparently, the other guy, Bill, didn't show up. So this guy was in one division. He traveled here. And if you, it's only you and one other guy in a division, you do a best of three. But Bill, yeah. Bill wasn't fighting anymore. And so. All of a sudden, Josh was like, I'll find you a fighter. You came here to fight. I'll find some somebody here would be more than happy to get a free fight yeah. with you. Yeah. You know, we'll throw it with you. Yeah. So he comes up to me and I'm, now I'm fighting this guy who, uh, for, for reference, I'm only a green belt, which is like halfway. Now, I've been doing it for a long time now, but belts are really slow in judo. You spend a lot of time at each belt. It's kind of a 10 year plus process to get your black belt. Oh, and cool. I'm essentially at like the halfway point. This guy's a brown belt. I have Just no like clue. Green. So it's two or three belts, depending on the school. Some schools do a blue and a purple. And some schools just do one or the other and then go to brown and then black. It okay. kind of depends. So... This guy's a brown belt, and I'm sitting next to him, and I'm, like, I, and I'm fighting you, and everybody's like, yeah, you're Bill. I'm like, okay. I'm Bill. <laughs> and so I, I get on the mat with this guy, and I, I think at this point, he's like, I was supposed to be fighting a, a brown or black belt, because I'm now fighting up. This guy's like 
30 pounds higher than me. Yeah. Um, this guy wait, is wait, wait, huge. Wait, 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 30 pounds heavier than you? Yeah. So no. this was, this was like, I'm like 73 kilos. I think this guy was 85, 90 kilos, right? And he's like 6'3". He's super tall. No. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Josh, he did a, he did a, you know, he did an oopsie poopsie. Yeah, he like he like switched it out on me real quick. I was like, okay, but I'm, at this point, I'm like, well, Josh thinks I can beat him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what I can do. <laughs> and so I go out on the mat, and I've been working on a lot of different techniques, but one that I do surprisingly well is called drop sayanagi. Essentially, I have one hand on him. They don't have the other hand on me, and I turn and drop to my knees while pulling and trapping their arm and then rolling them all the way over. It's a fun move. You go really, really fast. This guy was not expecting it. Threw him off the cusp. Got him. Match one done. We're in. Dust in his fucking hands. Let's go. <laughs> he said, bitch, watch me now. Watch this. So at this point, I'm like, okay, I guess I got one on him. And so now, now I go back. And at this point, Josh didn't coach me much for the first one. I think he was still walking over. I get in for the second one. This guy wasn't getting caught with that again. <laughs> he was like, it was like, no, no, you can get me with anything else, but that shit is not happening again. Oh my God. So I'm going over. I did it again. <laughs> I, I wish, I wish I was not getting him with that move. He was committed to not getting got with that move. But I'm turning to Josh and Josh is like, and so now I'm trying other stuff out. You know, I know a bunch of moves. I'm trying a bunch of different shit. And Josh being Josh, I, I swear it doesn't matter who you are. If you go into judo and you find yourself on a mat in a competition and Josh is there and he tells you something off the sideline, forget anything you think you're doing. Just do exactly what he says. It always <laughs> fucking works. It just works. I kid you not. You turn, you look at him. He says, do this. And I'm like, judo swami, dude. And it happens. I, it judo doesn't even swami. matter. Yeah, shit. Shit just works. You just got to listen. And now half the time, the problem is I, I can't listen and fight at the same time. But he's saying exactly what mm -hmm. to do in the corner of my perif, you know? Mm -hmm. I and love so, the video that Bon V, his, Eric's wife, showed me where she's recording, and all you hear is Josh going, Eric, Eric do the thing, Eric! He's not doing it! <laughs> yeah. he's not, he didn't do it! That's, that's okay, how it works, Eric. man. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it works. That's how it works. Half the time is just me zoning out, but. So I'm listening to Josh, and Josh is telling me what to do. I do the thing. He falls once, but only on his side, so I get half a point. At this mm -hmm. point, he got me in half a point, and I got him in half a point. We're tied. The next person to have anything happen wins. Ooh. And so I drag him a little bit. His foot comes forward. I go. I sweep it. I get it yeah. right onto his side. Boom. Match over. Was able to go a 2-0 sweep and uh, took home two golds. Yeah, damn, fine. huge, oh, yes. Eric. I like that story. That was yeah. good. It was had a, a it, had a beginning, middle, and end. Yeah, <laughs> it was a it was a dope, super fun tournament. And of course, thanks to the audience here, that was also one of our best performing shorts. And I, I'm glad y'all enjoyed that one. So it was, it was just overall the end of the day. I was like, shit's good. Let's uh, go. What can you say? So, Anthony, yeah. what'd you do? How are you doing? I'm good. I mean, those of you that uh, may have been here last week might remember that I went on a, you know, like two to three mile uh, hike up and down a mountain after my lovely dogs last week. So uh, this weekend I fixed the fence. Fantastic. <laughs> You're like, not and, again. Uh, Fantastic. And then my wife wanted to see the fence, you know, I was showing her all the changes and the dogs are out there with us and they think that we're about to go on a, an adventure. You know, they're, they're like super ecstatic. I mean, at one point they're sniffing the grass like they're cows because they eat grass sometimes like cows. And 
<laughs> that was weird. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and and then the next second, they notice that my wife and I are like at the fence going into the forest, and they're like, "Whoa, wait a second, where are we going?" They charge us, and then eventually we get to where the old hole was. And it was a big hole. There's a big tree that was down on it. And both of them look at us, look at the hole. There's no hole. They look at us, they look at it again. They both sit down, and they stare at the fence. They look at us, they stare at the fence. They're like, I thought we were going on an adventure. (laughs) No no more of that, you two. (laughs) They're like, what? But, but yeah. we had time now. <laughs> <laughs> that is done. Oh, oh man. Well, so, no more uh, Deku and uh, Yui Thank going you. on. Uh, I was going to say Yuki, and I was like, that's not right. <laughs> no. No, yeah. But, you know, that's about it. I mean, my, my mother in law was in town, so, you know, we hung out with her, and uh, I got to have a focaccia bread pizza. Focaccia. Focaccia bread pizza. No Never fall. had that before. That was shut cool. up, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> it was a new view pizza. Uh, <laughs> so, no, <laughs> not the oh, proper and, use uh, of the word or the Eric pronunciation. Will, <laughs> Eric will appreciate this, and Matt, you'll appreciate this once you come to town. Uh, I also had clam chowder and fries, which Ooh, that sounds really good. Actually, pretty dope. Especially. Dumb. Especially when the fries are uh, seasoned with Old Bay. Yeah. That's Old like, Bay. It's actually pretty Old good. Bay. Pretty good. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll attest. It, it definitely isn't a Boston clam chowder, but it's one of the best clam chowders I've had outside of Boston, for sure. Yeah. They and with the fries. Chef now. They have a new chef now who's even better. Oh, nice. So it's even better. I'll be there this weekend. <laughs> yeah. You will? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going yeah. to go on a little snowboarding adventure this weekend. Well, yeah. you guys enjoy that. I last week I realized um two things. One, I was done with my cybersecurity certification uh course which I finished I think Sunday last week. So huge props to myself. Thank you. Well done. Awesome. Um, awesome. And then I also realized that I'm going to need to do a little bit more studying before I do the certification exam for said uh, coursework, because it turns out it only covers about 50% of the material and that there are a lot of things that are not included in the coursework that they're expecting you to find another resource for. So I've been using Professor Messer's uh, playlist of uh, videos to get ready for 7.0 uh one for the uh so seven zero one for the uh security plus exam nice uh so that's 10 videos a day for the foreseeable 12 days you got this you got this grind through it man grind through it go um also, um, what else? What else? What else? What else happened? Oh, my wife is currently out of town, so I am left to my own devices. I may or may not order something terrible for myself in the next thirty minutes. I don't know if Dude. things will be open by that time. But go for it. You are starving. I'm not starving. I'm just. Starving. I'm just He's starving. <laughs> I'm just weak. <laughs> Uh, I really have so much I'm, not even, I'm not even really that hungry. I'm just like, man, I don't get the opportunities like this to just gorge myself. <laughs> Dude, that exact same thing would happen to me whenever my wife went out of town and we were living in the city. I would be like, oh, I don't usually order that or that or that. I I would love some of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like trying to order some strange food and you're just like, I don't know, maybe maybe I'm just feeling a little frisky today. Maybe I just maybe I want to try that tortilla stuff with bay leaves and I don't know, hummus. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, is, there be- hmm? is there a doggy bed in the background right there? Oh, right there? Oh, uh- it- yeah, right there. I, I just saw it. And that's Kiko. Little, 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 Kiko's little, in there. Aww. There he is. Kiko. Come here. Hey, buddy. Come here, bud. Aww. Aww. Kiko. We're now this, a the puppy cast. not seeing it. Come here. Come here, bud. Yes. We got to see We gotta see the puppy. I mean, we're... Oh. we're vi- for anybody who's just Aww. listening on Spotify or something like that, there's now a dog on screen. 
And Spot <laughs> Spotify actually allows you to play videos, so just switch oh. over to that and look at the puppies. Just, yeah. just a little, he did a little bird. So this is Kiko. He is a Maltese Yorkie mix, and he is my wife's dog, and he is my baby. Nice. He's a sweet baby, Snookums. And I. You remember? Uh, you will remember New World with the uh, the healers that would cast Malti? <laughs> I, I do remember this. <laughs> Oh man! Wow, I I think this is the the longest we've ever done an intro for. Yeah, this is the longest. So, but we're gonna, we're gonna get to it. Yeah, and, and for people who don't know, based on the first thirty minutes, uh, this is a whiskey and games <laughs> podcast. And today we we have a pretty fun thing. So, uh, funnily enough, there's a little bit of a story to this one. I recently went to Pigeon Forge. And we did one of our one of my good friends her birthday was right before Christmas. We went and saw the Christmas lights and experienced Dollywood and Pigeon Forge and rented out a cabin, had had a wonderful weekend. And of course, Pigeon Forge is known for a few things. One of them happens to be the Old Smoky uh, Distillery, which is known for their moonshine, but they've actually started doing some bourbons and things like that. And we actually have some of that to try in a later episode. Uh, but in another part of Pigeon Forge, there is the Junction 35 Distillery. And so today mm -hmm. we have the Junction 35 off the rail experiment line. Now, Junction 35 has a bunch of different options, and some of them are regular bourbons, etc. They have tons of normal shit. This is not the normal stuff. So every experiment line that they do is entirely different, and it's constantly evolving and changing. And so this is called the experiment Smoky Mountain Sunrise. I just want all you to know that I am not intoxicated enough to have commit to gone through with this, but uh, my wife gave me some tools, and I almost grabbed this to measure, oh, which would have been hilarious since it's a funnel uh, instead of the actual measuring device. Oh, jeez, oh, could have been a rough. Oh, now, to be fair, last time you poured three hundred milliliters in. It did. And I'm not making that mistake today. Well, you wouldn't be able to because the bottle is almost only 300 milliliters. And so I didn't give you that much this time. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this. Yeah, I have no idea how big this flask is either. Uh, it's probably like 100 milliliters. I think I had. Actually, I remember now. It's four ounce flask. I remember uh, Eric was getting ready to leave and I picked this one up and I was like, Eric, there's like nothing in it. Oh yeah, that's right. You almost had none. This so, thing's th this is a thickum. Yeah, and so you and very bright. I just want to say this is a bourbon, a five-year bourbon finished in a type of barrel. I want to see if y'all can guess what type of barrel this was finished in. Just off the nose, Peter. Let's see if let's see if Nat can get his sniffer out. Anthony's at uh Cedar. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Let me pick out oh, some man. wood. I'm oh, amateur man. guess. <laughs> it's very light. It's very light. Ooh, you smell it's it a birch. little bit. Think birch. more of another type of whiskey. Like Angel's Envy is finished in ruby port barrels. I wouldn't oh. say wine. Maybe, uh, sh maybe sherry? Cognac. Cognac's an okay guess, but it is not cognac. It is not it's a not, wine. It's not sherry? It is not sherry. Mountain Dew? I now want that to be a thing so that we can try it's, it on the podcast. It's definitely not rum. Is it rum? It is not mm -hmm. rum. I said it's definitely not rum, and then I asked, is it rum? Oh, my God. Try, try your little palate cleanser sip. See if that helps. Okay, okay. Unlock okay. some of those flavors. But, and it's got yeah. a... Um, 
It's got a light smell, and I can't talk too much about the smell to give away the barrel, but this is, funnily enough, a five-year bourbon aged in Añejo barrels. I don't even know what that is. I've never Eric, even heard that word Eric, in my entire what life. What the fuck? Like, am I ever going to guess that? Eric, what the fuck? Look at me. What do you mean? What do you mean? You can't even say Nouvelle right, Eric. You can't even say Nouvelle right. No. What are you trying to say? No. Garbage. <laughs> it's all that comes out of your mouth is garbage. Añejo tequilas. Thank you for the whiskey. Tequilas. It's a Look, tequila Eric, barrel. Eric. <laughs> Eric. I love you. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> like we were supposed to know that Añejo would cask. Are no, 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 no. Exclusively not, for tequila. Not Añejo. No, 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 no. Añe Añejo is Añ Añejo is in a wood. Um, oh my fucking god! I'm gonna. Fuck uh, Añejo is a tequila that has been aged in oak barrels from one to three years. So <laughs> aged in oak barrels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Normal, normal, normal oak barrels. But <laughs> no, it's. <laughs> you made me so mad, Eric. You made me so mad. <laughs> so it's it's finished. So they aged the añejo tequila in these barrels. Then they take all the tequila out, and then they put some bourbon in there, and that's what you got here. And so you have some wonderful tequila notes on the nose. My God, yeah, I smell it now. Yeah, you get a little bit of that tequila. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> um, and it's actually a pretty fun little <sighs> bourbon. It's not, I wouldn't say that it has anything it's super, <laughs> it doesn't have anything too crazy. It doesn't have anything too crazy. It just says it on your fucking barrel. It's a fucking oak barrel. You know what? Go ahead. And if, any, if anyone here hasn't watched the TV show Psych, you gotta watch it. And then you'll understand this man so much more, because he is Sean. <laughs> Valid, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's surprisingly sweet, actually. Very, and I think it almost gets a little bit of that agave sort of sweetness, mm -hmm. just a little. It's almost too sweet. Yeah, it, it's almost too sweet. It's so this is only ninety proof, by the way. So it's pretty low proof too. It yeah, doesn't have. Tell. Yeah, it has no no burn. It it's really burn. But I also so think I would call weak. All right, it's actually pretty uh, thin in flavor because of that too. I, I think I was gonna say you, we, we'll we'll talk about it in a second. Yeah, you going. you almost get a little bit of tequila notes with a little bit of vanilla. This actually has pretty strong just vanilla notes with a little bit of that añejo agave flavor that's going on, and then. That's about it. It's yeah. it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. Not a lot of brown sugar. Yeah, not, not a lot of brown sugar. A lot of yeah, not a lot of like the like the burn is there, but it's not black pepper. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's, it's if, more if it, if it cinnamon. Is, it's it's more it's more so like almost yeah seasonal. It's not yeah. It's not a, it's not strictly black pepper. I would say it is closer to. An all spice type of deal. Yeah. Yeah. Which I don't know. I mean, now I feel like I can smell black pepper now that you made me think about it. I can't smell black pepper. Yeah. I think I'm just I think I'm just triggering your uh psychosomatic connections. I think that's how you say it. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, now it is now now my smell is getting more sweet. I also just smelled my baseline Woodfords, which might be affecting things. Mm, yeah. But I, I, I have to say, there is nothing unpleasant about this whiskey at all. Really. There, there are no unpleasant notes. It's just a, uh, a fun, light drinker. Um, with a little bit of that Añejo character. I would say, if you like tequila, this isn't a bad, uh, bad way to go, no. honestly. It's kind of fun. Yeah, it gives you the same kind of mouthfeel if you, as if you had like a, a shot yeah. of um, tequila. I've never had a sipping tequila, so 
that's only my only experience. So viewers, if you want me to know more because I'm a Neanderthal, I mean, the yeah. only solution is to send us sipping tequila. We're going to try some tequilas in Mezcals for sure. Fair. And we're uh, going to like all the, the nose is like developed for me because at first, once you mentioned the tequila, I was like, oh yeah, I can smell tequila. And then after a while it started to get really sweet. Mm -hmm. So it just like kind of evolved for me. Yeah. It's but like it's, super sweet. Yeah. It is. A, it's very sweet. It's. And that's what extra uh, like. I, I think Anthony's had this. I can't remember if I've given it to you, Nat. There's an extra Añejo Adictivo. It's a tequila in a black bottle. It's kind of like a matte black finish. No. And the bottle is twisted. It almost no. looks like an off kilter. Mm -mm. It tastes like maple syrup with a little bit of bite. It's super fun. A great mm. sipping tequila. I heavily recommend it. Um, it's one of our favorites. You have to text it to me. Yeah. So I can put it into my Notion database. Oh, yeah. I got you. And they, Addictivo actually makes a bourbon as well. Mm. And it also tastes like a maple syrup bourbon. I do feel that once you start aging these whiskeys in Añejo barrels, you really do get a lot of that Añejo sweetness that you get from mm -hmm. sipping tequilas where it starts to almost get a syrupy sweetness sickly. to it. Yeah. No, sorry, not sickly. Uh, uh, soup. What is it called? When it's like almost too, it's like on the verge of too sweet and mm. uh, it rides the, the line. Almost super saturated. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, I'm ready for my rating. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do it. Shoot. Shoot. What would what, you rate this? I will let you guys. Wait, 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 wait. wait. We almost did it in secret. the wrong order. We almost did okay, it in the wrong okay, order. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Right, you're messing up the show. So sorry. I'm just I'm messing. so sorry. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so sorry. Uh, so if, if you were to walk into a store. Mm hmm. At what price point are you getting this? What would you pay? You walk into a store, you see, you see the price tag, and it's like, hello. And you're like, I'm buying it. What is the price? 70. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Anthony? Which is? I was going to say 60. I <laughs> Eric's like three hundred and seventy-five dollars. <laughs> Those new barrels are cheap, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I. There's going to be a huge caveat to this. I'll I'll hold off on mine. Mm -hmm. I I know the MSRP. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what would you what would you rate this? So, backstory before I give you my number, I have not ever been a tequila fan mm. this is a big miss for me a big miss so and you'd, you'd the, still pay 70 for it i know because of the the distilling process i would like to be able to pay it forward to the brew to the distillery also my wife would love it uh, I see. I see. You're like, I'll put a little extra money in it for yeah, the, for the wife. Well. Yeah. It'd, be, it'd be a great Valentine's yeah, Day she, present. She'd for probably like enjoy anyone. this. Honestly, it would be a great present just in general for anybody who's like a, a tequila exclusive drinker and is like looking to kind of branch out and get weird. Yeah, um, it's definitely a know. fun gift. It, and it definitely puts that extra foot forward where you're like, hey, I wanted you yeah. to, in, to introduce you to the world that mm. I kind of like. And mm. this combines that with the things you like it's pretty Absolutely. thoughtful it's a thoughtful gift i like it yeah uh i would i i want to give two ratings honestly uh one for me and one for anybody who's into tequila the rating for the people who are into te tequila i'd give a firm six yeah because it's it's definitely more than decent it's accessible it is Taste wise, not going to be hard to get behind if you are willing to if you have been a bourbon drinker before and you're willing to try it out again or bourbon or whiskey. Um, that being said, for me, it's going to be. A f I would say like a three point five. Yeah. Like. 
I've never again, I've never been a fan. Uh, for me, the the sweetness kind of lands flat, and I really wanted a little bit more nuance to the sweetness. But all I all I'm getting is that the, is the sense that it is sweet. If that makes any sense, I don't have any character to it, um, other than the agave, and the agave itself is not enough for me to supplant my judgment on tequila in general, and say that this is worth my dollar. That's not to say that this isn't a good choice for anybody else, but this is this ain't this isn't for me. Anthony, what's what's your rating? <clears throat> so, I was going to give it a four, but in thinking about it, and thanks to Nat, I think my baseline Woodford's Reserve is like a three, and this is just barely better than that for me. And so, yeah, I think I, I will also give it a 3 at 0.5 because 4 is a little bit of a stretch from 3. Mm-hmm. Because the thing it has going for it for me is the smell. You know, it, it had a decent smell. Um, but I didn't get that right away. I didn't get that till later. And I might have only have gotten it because you guys were talking. I might only have gotten it because I also had the Woodfords here. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's weak. It's, it's just not given me much uh excitement you know there's I, I, i'm not getting any flavors really that i enjoy it's just the smell so i was like yeah it smells good but like i don't know um there's things i would rather have like i'd rather have the uh, barrel strength bullet than this yeah. which i think is like 65 or 70 maybe 75 so yeah would you put your what'd you put the right. price tag at? My price tag for this was sixty. It was sixty? Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh yeah. Rick. So Alec. I, yeah. <laughs> What's the, you said, uh Rick. <laughs> so what'd you think there, Rick? <laughs> just oh for just for reference, I, I'm pretty sure that I paid around fifty five. For this? Oh, thank goodness. Oh, wow. I thought we were being offensive oh, for a second. Man, yeah. I really I'm pretty know. sure we paid about, I paid about 55 for this. Now, Relief. the only caveat to that is that this is a half size. This is a 300, um, oh. 375 milliliter bottle. So this oh. isn't the full 750. So you're getting half the whiskey for that price. Mm-hmm. So that's Less putting a full it? bottle at this is about 120. Right now, I tend I really love this idea, the experimental line and being able to try out new stuff and have cool things like a five year bourbon finished in an Añejo Añejo barrel is such a nifty idea. And I think this nails that concept. Mm -hmm. I think that if you like Añejo tequilas and you kind of like bourbons or kind of like whiskeys every now and then is going to be right up your alley you should if you're in pigeon forge and you see one like this buy one it's super fun all their experimental lines are really fun and i don't think anything about this is negative or disappointing there are no off flavors there's nothing in here that is like off-putting it's just a pleasant easy drink but with that said, I tend to agree with Anthony's description of it that it is definitely pretty one note. You get a little bit of that caramel mm-hmm. and you get a little bit of that tequila esque flavors and a little bit of that agave sweetness with a light burn. And that's about it. And so mm-hmm. it doesn't last a long time, it's not super viscous. So it doesn't coat the mouth or have a nice mouth feel. Mm. Um, the smell is pretty pleasant. But I, I tend to agree. I have a little bit of this and I want more. Mm-hmm. Um, I really wish they had like, if they had taken the idea of let's go ahead and take a sipping tequila and put it in a bourbon. I think that this would have been incredible. So I think we'll have to try the Adictivo whiskey. Because that's yeah. what that is. That is a phenomenal yeah. bourbon. 
yeah. super well, fun. Just, yeah, I really want to know what this tastes like at barrel strength. A hundred percent. I see, and I think something for the the <laughs> listeners to kind of understand is that, especially for me, I drank a lot of whiskeys. I'm very <sighs> used to that acetone front. I it, I, I barely even taste acetone in a lot of whiskeys anymore Mm -hmm. and so i get a lot of these flavors but what that tends to mean is that higher proof whiskeys tend to have more flavors if you can get past the heat yeah and so i tend to feel the same nothing is bad about this i would love to see a higher proof it's probably Mm -hmm. not for me i think if you like the sound of this idea that they have on the bottle if you look at this bottle and say i don't like a lot of proof I like tequilas, and I kind of want a whiskey right now. Go pick this up. It's not too bad. 60 bucks for a 375 milliliter bottle that you can share with somebody in Pigeon yeah. Forge after yeah. a day at Dollywood is going to be so cool. Yeah. So definitely worth picking up. But Question. I tend to agree. Yeah. 3.5 is about where I'd put it to. It's in yeah. the, th- the three range for me. Mm-hmm. Question. Um... With the uh, with knowing that it comes in pretty much the half size and the full size, does your rating change if they completely withdrew withdrew the smaller size? Mm. Because honestly, well, to you, me, sorry, they I'm don't like, have a full a, size. They don't even have a full size for it. No, they oh, only have the okay, three hundred and seventy five yeah. milliliter bottles. Honestly, bottles. honestly. That's a great place to start with this kind of whiskey. Oh, sorry, bourbon. Bourbon? Yeah, bourbon. it is a bourbon. It's a five-year sorry. bourbon. Five-year. Okay. I would I would say this is a great starting point for that kind of bourbon just because it's not a lot of bourbon to go ahead and uh per experience to um financial investiture. So if you're really wanting to try this on your own, $60 is not not a very expensive buy-in to having something new in your repertoire. Like the idea of being able to pour this out for guests who are coming over for like a certain party that I know are into this kind of thing and being like, hey – we want to try this out, see how, see what it tastes like. Let me know what your thoughts are. Here are the tasting notes. Here's what we kind of came uh, up with whenever we were talking about it. What are your thoughts? Yep. I think it's a great, it's, a, it's again, as you've said it before, it's a fun buy. I would say that it is, it is a wild card. Yeah. And the I sense agree. that you, you're either going to love the idea and dig deeper into the idea of, of putting, these kinds of spirits or this these kinds of distilling in intertwined with bourbon or other spirits or you're gonna not or you're gonna hate it yeah one of the two agreed agreed yeah, yeah but a... like yeah it not bad at all yeah, um, fun. i re- i really want to kind of see where this goes in terms of the um the sipping uh tequila blended with that bourbon because i think that that will be very special yeah that's that's a fun one Um, it would definitely be a great option for introducing someone to you know bourbon i would disagree and if they i was gonna say if they like tequila i would still disagree why i i think there is not enough of either to define both for them to be representative in a single bottle, I do not get enough of either to say that this is a definitive experience of a blend of tequila, of a tequila refining process intertwixt. Well, so I'm, I'm mostly bourbon. thinking of the idea of people that have only ever taken like shots of liquor and it mm-hmm. not being something too intimidating or too overpowering to sip. That's kind of what I'm thinking about. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I it, see that. I think it does a better job at enhancing the palette for people who already like both rather mm-hmm. than introducing one of either palette. Like it, it doesn't do as good a job at bridging the gap as it does at being like, oh, you like tequila and you like a little bit of whiskey. 
this has a little bit of both. Yeah. Right. I feel like, like it does that really or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I think you're, uh, and I'm, I'm going to keep on referring to it because I'm really intrigued, but the uh, sipping tequila that is oh. intertwixed with bourbon, I think that that is your best introductory piece for somebody who is into tequila and has yep. had sipping tequila and is like, I only do sipping tequila. Why would I try bourbon? And it's like, well, uh, and that's going to be super each. unfortunate once we try it because a bottle of that is about no, don't no, ah, you can't tell the price because we're going to have it. Shut up. Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. You're right. You're right. You're right. I got that's right. You're that's right. right. You're right. Cobra Kai. Uh, All right. But but cool. Uh, well, with that, we'll we'll segue into our ad. No, wait, no, no ad read this week. But oh, interesting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that is? Uh, working, oh, working, God. working. But Anthony, what have you what have you been playing this week? Man, well, uh, I played a little bit of Power World. I actually spent most of the week um, trying to keep up with the whole release a short a day thing. Uh, for those of you in the know, uh, we or Eric, our host, started releasing our shorts and our, um, you know, the podcast as a whole. And when I saw that, I was like, felt inspired and started making my own shorts finally for yeah. my channel. And uh, yeah, it's been going well. Um, so that's been taking up a lot of my time in the mornings, like first thing. But yeah, Power World has still been, you know, a great game. It's it's just so enjoyable. Um, Have you paid attention well, at all to the Twitter storm that's happening? A little, no, because yes. anything that people say about it is just right, ridiculous. Yes, whatever. Are we gonna? <laughs> do you want to enlighten us again? Are we gonna do this again? Yeah. We did talk so, about it last time, didn't long we? Long story. Long story short, a lot of people are screaming a lot of stuff out into the ether, basically saying like pretty much the gambit of what we talked about last time on the episode. If you guys want to check that out, go ahead and jump over to the last episode. I believe it was episode eight. Um, But the one thing that I feel has been the most uh, summative statement that you can attach to this entire situation is. (laughs) Kiko. (laughs) Kiko over here stealing the show. (laughs) <laughs> the only thing I would go ahead and say is, well, sorry, what uh, the kind of summative statement that a lot of people are coming coming towards is, yes, this is a great game, and it should not be uh, relegated to any form of hate for the amount of success that they're doing. It's a video game. That being said, the people who made it probably should have known better making the game as similar to Pokemon as they did. Why? They had a no, because they had a choice. The, there is a there there are multiple Pokemon that are pretty much almost one for one re- represented in figure or in color scheme and figure in the game. There is a so, there is a I mean, panel that literally looks question. like yeah for like those sorts of things is, is how do you make it different enough? You know, it's because there's certain things that you go and represent in and any sort of game, like a chair. Totally. If you're going to represent a chair. Yeah. All chairs are going to have a similarity and you can't get away from that. So if you want to make I'm not a saying. monster that looks like a dog ish, but like a Fox, there's I'm only so saying. much you can do. I am not saying that there is no credence to saying that there is a there's a fine line between concepts and there and that intertwixting with Japanese, Chinese or worldly um, mythology. Totally understand that. But there is a line that has been crossed in the usage of the zeitgeist of of our previous experiences in Pokemon in this game. There are too many things. The the Pokeballs are still Pokeballs. It's a round device catching it catching a Pokemon. What are you gonna it, What are you gonna throw? It, a, a cube? You can you can throw anything. <laughs> Look, it's just an example. When you throw it's, something, you throw a ball. It's just an example. 
it it triggers three times. Why does it have to trigger three times? Right? Sure, magic number, whatever. But there are so many things that are synonymous with Pokemon that are present in Power World that you're just like, okay, I get it. You're doing a great job at making a video game. However, you are pulling really hard from some of our some of the previous things that have been created in a game. You're not wrong. But it is kind of sketchy because then it leads into ideas of like, well, if I'm going to do if if you're going to create a game that is so snobbishly close to Pokemon, what eventually triggers the. uh, The trap of, oh, it's full on copyright infringement. Let's go time out with the the biggest response I can I have to that is that. Uh, I can't, what is it? Copyright or um, patents? They go out after 25 years. So you have 25 years to take your creation and do with it what you will. And after that, it's free for everyone in the world to use and to experience as they want. Pokemon has been around for over 25 years or close to it. They have had plenty of time and plenty of success with that. So even if mm-hmm. someone blatantly, purposefully, 100% copied them, at this point, that's okay. If if they were, if I just created Pokemon mm-hmm. this past year as a creator with you guys, maybe even, and we just came out with it, and we haven't made money much at all, and then someone copies us, that's horrible. That's yes, terrible. Correct. But if we've been doing this for 25 years, we've gotten all of our, our share of things in it, and we're old and, and, and set in our ways and we're not being creative, the rest of the world has the right to take what we have created and play with it however they want. You know, it's just like fan fiction. You get to do what you want with, with what I, we provided them. I agree. Up to a point, because I do feel like the novelty of this opportunity has been squandered. You had you had the opportunity to create this game. Yes, of course, it's going to have ties towards Pokemon because of what you guys are are shaping up and doing what you have made. That being said, there is literally a there's a Lucario model in in the game. Well, pretty much almost one for one. It's not it's not exact, obviously. The green bunny? Yes. It looks almost exactly like Lucario. And there's, I'm pretty sure there's one from you two as well. I don't remember. But An- Anubis is uh, Lucario. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that this game shouldn't be as successful as it is. I'm saying that I really wish that there was a game that did this and took the idea and basically shat all over Pokemon and said, we're going to take your idea. We're going to make new Pokemon. We're going to make pretty much new Pokemon because it it comes out as pretty pretty much being. And we're going to keep these game systems and it's just it's going to be just as successful because it does everything that we wanted the Pokemon games to do. I, I unfortunately, and I'll speak a little bit more to the previous points a little in a, in a second, but I, I don't think this is a company that can do that, unfortunately. No, of course this, not. This company, no. for example, a lot it's of like the... four guys, right? Yeah, and a lot of the pocket, uh, pocket pair, I think is their name. The, um, a lot of the company that's working on Power World, they're new developers. Mm-hmm. These are... The, they don't have a... Like, dedicated game developers they're fairly new at game development the way yeah. they're able to work so quickly is because they're reusing ideas they're taking stuff that already works and, get back and they're again. making it work better yeah right they have genuinely good ideas for improvement and collaborations and they're executing them very well mm-hmm. now that isn't the downplay what they're doing is bad but they just aren't a company filled with these creative minds that are creating something new we just don't see that from this developer they found a missing part of the market people love the idea of pokemon people have a lot of nostalgia for it and 
If you were to sit down and say, I really love Pokemon and I want to create a game that's similar to Pokemon, you're going to be hard pressed not to create something that's very similar to Pokemon because Pokemon has, like, their, their company has essentially written the book on how to design memorable animal like characters. If you go across in almost any game, that has pets, uh, allies, or friendly characters that are animals. You're going to find a, a Pokemon design philosophy inside of it. Now, obviously, Power World does that more than other games because their game is about that. But I think when you look and say, I want to design something that embodies electricity, for example, all of your design principles are going to be very similar to everyone that's designed something about electricity before. You're going to see jagged lines that look like lightning bolts. You're going to see animals that are quick. You're going to see things like horses and uh, four-legged creatures that are fast. You're going to see things like bunnies and mice that are known for being quick because that's what we put into the idea of this lightning element. And that's going to be true for water element. The minute you try to apply those ideas, your design philosophies, even if you started from scratch, I think you would be hard pressed to not have something come up as being similar. Now, there are some obvious examples of there's this philosophy term. I don't know it off the top of my head, but this idea that you are always taking ideas from things in your past, even if you do that subconsciously. And this happens a lot in music, and there have even been some cases where artists have sued over copyright when they literally created that from scratch. They just happen to be influenced by the same ideas. Now, in this example, Pokemon has been around long enough that I think if you took a group of developers, locked them in a room for six months, and said, create a new Pokemon-like game, and you have to use all original designs, somebody's creating something that looks exactly like a Pokemon. Yes. And with that said, me, would I have loved something that was more creative with this idea? Yes. Do mm -hmm. I think that would have worked in the market as well as Power has? No. I think the fact that they use the same design philosophies and have this same cute level and Pokemon nostalgia attachment to it is one of the reasons it is so popular. Do I think that the you know Game Freak will sue or Pokemon's company will nah. sue? There's not much that they could get at best, at absolute best that I, I've seen from the videos I've watched is that maybe they change a few designs lightly. However, that's about all they can do. That's about all they can do. And I don't no. think that's a bad thing. I think that what Pokemon should, but Game Freak, they have an opportunity here, if anything else. If a company yeah. is able to go and take your ideas and implement them better than one of the largest companies on the planet, that's not on them. That's on the largest company on the planet. Like they, Absolutely. they, they got to do better. There was a missing market here. And this company capitalized. Pokemon mm. could have capitalized on this years ago. They just yep. chose not yeah. to. And yeah, so they almost had it when they made Arceus. They almost did, yeah. But they They're did. They in the right direction. So many of us were like, "Oh my god, it's so close!" Just, this is just like the prequel to the next big thing. Yeah. They're gonna do it. They're finally gonna do it, and, and nothing and happened. Stopped. And look, I for one, what I like you said, what I've loved something. It was more creative, more unique, that had these ideas. Yes, it would not have been as popular. I would have liked it more. But 
yeah. I cannot fault this company for pretty much anything. They they took good ideas and mashed them together in a creative, interesting way, and they executed really well as a new development company that's only been developing stuff for a few years. And like that's insanely cool. Like it's inspirational for people that want to make games but know that it takes hundreds if not thousands of people to make the games that people think are simple but are not yeah all oh, there's really so much hoping, work to be done this, this is what i'm really hoping i'm hoping that the crazy success of power world allows power world to become a firmly seated like rabble rouser <laughs> for uh game freak and they actually take more than one year to develop um i also yeah. hope that the the success allows power world to continue to refine and enhance the model that they already have like i because i feel like the sky is the limit for them in the sense that they have they already have the tools game freak has to catch up to where they're going in terms of mentality but these guys have already captured your your vision so all they need to do is keep on improving on what they already know and what they can do so i'm excited for the future i think it's going to be great um to to cap on (laughs) anthony's initial statement of that he played a little bit of power world that we went on a full tirade on um yes yeah power world good um it's 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 very it's it's very close to a lot of to a lot of statements that make people are making about pokemon but yeah how we're still good how we're still good like what are you gonna say great yeah that's a great game what else is good i have the other game and i know it's good yeah what what is the other game you played the other game is sea of thieves i finally played some sea of thieves i don't give a fuck move on and (laughs) and we all know that matt hates sea of thieves but this game finally released it's not a finished game anthony it 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 is now actually no it's not it is it is a finished game now if you don't believe you there there are many story arcs and and you can even go and do the story without worrying about someone killing you you can go into just pve only mode and and do all the story stuff uh the biggest thing that they changed is when you're in the pvp area the high seas you can now dive so you submerge underwater and you re-emerge right at your start of your voyage so if you're going to raid a, a fort, then you're just at the fort, right? And you can't go to one that is contested already. So you're the only one starting there. And they've cut out just all of the uh, slow buildups. You can just hop into the seas right away. And apparently like 50% of boats that got sunk in the past had nothing on them because they were actually traveling to their destination or, you know, mm, to yeah. get stuff well now if you ever see a boat not at an island they have loot like there's almost a guarantee that they have loot that you want because they also this one guy spent a whole year with creating the biggest spreadsheet he's ever seen and they rebalanced everything so now everything is worth far more money and you have far less loot to carry. So it's less cumbersome and more rewarding. And there's just one of the coolest things they've done is that there's these shipwrecks that you'll come across. And we'll all just be like, I'm never going to stop there because I've stopped there and it's worthless. Now it's the most unique thing you could get. And it is well worth it for you to stop. Wow. And then the same thing happens with uh messages in a bottle that you find if you find a message in a bottle that is going to give you s tier loot like you want that message in a bottle that is huge and it's just wonderful and and then another thing for the people that are really into pvp if you go as a reaper you'll be able to eventually once you get to like (laughs) reaper five it just takes a 30 minutes to an hour of gameplay you'll be able to see all the other players on the on the map right and then go and reap them but if there's no one there or no one has anything you want you dive and re-emerge on another server and you keep it and now you can 
check that server. Anybody want to go after? No? Okay, I'll dive again. And it's just made the game quicker. much more efficient, quicker. The, just the gameplay loop is really tight and just less wasted time, really. It, it, and so they're doing a good job. And Power World has taken most of my time, um, but I'm going to get back into the Sea of Thieves at some point because it's just great for messing around and making content and stuff like that. Cool. But, um, yeah. But other than that, I, I know, I don't know, we kind of fell out of this segment, and it's the segment of uh, what are you looking forward to? But I, I have to bring it back up because I'm really looking forward to something huge, mm. which is that Star Citizen. Oh my fucking god! Is finally about to be in a place where Eric will enjoy it. Well, <laughs> we'll see. The new interaction system is about to come out. Okay, okay, yeah. that is one of my main the concerns. New, yeah, the new star map is coming out as well with that all um, of this is first quarter they're fixing the uh the whole like oh you're traveling through space standing straight up as a floating standing straight up person to no you're you're, you're flying like superman or like what you'd see in the expanse if you've seen the expanse show and if you move your head around your body just rotates around you don't <laughs> flip out like some sort of weird ragdoll thing you know mm -hmm. and nice. they're just they're implementing a lot of cool things like if you want to load up your big ship with a bunch of uh smaller ships or ground vehicles well now there's an elevator that's going to bring that up to you you know and just more and more cool stuff like that if anyone saw citizen con there's a surprising amount of stuff that is coming in because they finished making the single player game squadron 42 it is feature complete so now they are taking a lot of those uh, mechanics and core aspects of the game and transfer them, transferring them over to Star Citizen. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Huh. So I think that's about it, though. You know, except for the occasional rumble, which is just a just a thing. Yeah. Nice. Matt, what have you what have you been playing? Yeah, outside oh. of I know I know life has been a lot. But have you had any time? Have you done oh, any wait. fun stuff? The so, game, the cult. I've been playing Cult of Lamb, yeah. Cult of Lamb a lot. Okay, okay. That's a good one. It's still great. Last week we said it was great. This week we'll say it's great. Next week we'll say it's great. This, it's this great. week it was really hard to separate my life from wait. Cult of the Lamb oh. because the, the, it's a vicious cycle of just like there's always something to do. There's how many something to do how many villagers did you have last week when we talked i had six last time okay we talked. yeah and how many I do have you have 19 now, now. Yeah. 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 There we go. yeah and i really want to be able to redesign my base because right now it looks an app it's an absolute atrocity compared Are you to not able scene. to move stuff? i don't know like i don't oh. know if that's like a feature that it's comes coming? at the end of the game hmm. but uh <laughs> i'm currently locked out of the very last boss because I need to get 20 followers. I'll probably do that after this podcast, to be honest. But um nice. after that, I'm I'm gonna I I'm just guessing here. I haven't done any research. I've done this game blind. I'm very happy with it. Um and so if anybody chooses to spoil it, I will find you and probably tell your mom that you touch yourself at night. Anyway, um uh back on t back on task uh, <laughs> the the only hang up that i have is that i'm pretty sure i know how this is going to end it's either you choose to continue to follow the god or you become your you become a god yourself and i'm totally down with becoming a god it's it sounds super cool i just don't know where the game goes continuity wise other than just like maximization and yes, i don't uh... I, I love maximization. It's it's I I already made I already gave birth to a character named Jub Jub and Tuck Tuck. I'm done. That's no. it. Nice. <laughs> Jub yeah, Jub. yeah. So, uh, please don't spoil anything because my wife and I both got so caught up in the villager aspect that I don't know if either of us made it past the second boss. 
the second dude i'm not spoiling anything like you <laughs> already knew <laughs> like you start it. you started the game and you knew what are you talking about <laughs> we never finished it though Cult of the, Lamb, the very beginning of the game you basically become the um uh, the single uh what is it the embodiment Savior, uh, yeah. embodiment of an elder god yeah and the elder god has been very clear that he wants you to murder all of the other gods yeah where do you think that's gonna end dude no clue shut more up. oblivious shut i can up, be anthony. more enjoyable shut bit. up anthony shut up you know exactly what it is you just yeah. choose to live in the world that you are ignorance is it does not have a return receipt <laughs> ignorance <laughs> sorry awareness does not have a return receipt <laughs> oh my god <sighs> that's fun yeah. um i've been playing that uh what i've been most what i'm most psyched up for is every saturday i do laundry and i watch the new episode of solo leveling because dude is so good my boy song song woo. Woo. song woo he's living oh it man he, so good so good i love the manga I love the anime. Fucking amazing. People are starting hey. to post it, uh, starting to post excerpts of the webtoon in my TikTok feed. And I'm like, y'all don't even fucking know. Y'all don't, don't even, even know. know. We you were there know. when the when the texts were written. Wow. Deep, deep dig there. A Dude, bit I, I started on chapter four or five. Yeah. On release, and I read it in time with the release schedule. Disgusting. So good. And so, so good. good. You, so the people who are watching right now, you're in for a treat. Yeah. I'm very, I'm kind of jealous that this is the iteration of uh, solo leveling that a lot of people are getting, um, because huh? in the later series, like I don't know how they're going to try and keep up. Like, I'm pretty sure if they like, I don't know who the animation studio behind Soul Leveling is right now, but it's the same, same, it's A1, the uh, same company that did oh, Sword A1. Art Online. Okay, so they have the chops to do it. You guys yeah. are in for a stupid treat then. Yeah. As um, long as we don't switch production studios or animation studios, A1. we're good. Just don't lose we're A1. good. Uh, the only person that I would probably forward this over to is UFO Tape. Uh, you table and yeah. they don't touch anything but fate so yeah i, mean, I know <laughs> i wouldn't give it to anybody else i yeah. would take pity on the people from mappa like just yeah. let them rest they don't deserve yeah. the, the amount of crunch that they're going through they should get it too um, i mean the, the 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 only sad part about all of this is that the creator doesn't get to see it and uh, it's just such uh, like they're doing such good work by taking yeah. over that manga and it's like I'm so happy that we're seeing more Korean manhwas in in anime in general. You know, we have it's solo leveling, we have too, Tower yeah. of God, yeah. and they're doing them justice. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's so nice to see that. And I, I noticed that you exerted high school. Uh, um, what is it? God of high school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We don't need that. <laughs> we don't need to speak about that. And yeah, we don't. Beautifully, but yeah, no. what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing, guys? Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm probably most excited for, other than um, playing more Cult of the Lamb, honestly. I just want to get to the end so I can kind of detach my life from my Switch at this point. Nice. Like, I was on the Monster Hunter kick, and, like, I've, I've, I think I've... I think I've I think I've kicked that as well. And now I just play Baldur's Gate with my uncle for like an hour every nice. week. And that's about it, man. Dude, Baldur's just, Gate is I'm, always good, man. Always it's my good. own. It's my little break in between uh, grinding out. So that's what I'm looking forward to. That's what I'm playing. Uh, God, do I have anything else that I'm looking forward to? I can't think of anything off the top of my head as of right now, other than eventually seeing Godzilla minus uh, minus one. Dude, me too. Trying or to find a way zero, to see it. Zero minus one. I, I, yeah. I forget the uh, fixation at the end of that, but uh, so, I really want to see it. There's three new Godzilla things. Which one is this? No. The new we, movie. There is yeah. only one. Yeah. There's, there's literally no, three there new Godzillas at once. 
I know. So Godzilla X Kong, the new empire or the or the rising empire, the rise of the empire, whatever, is Kong the, okay. is America's version of Godzilla. And it's comically um, good. Whereas good? Godzilla okay. minus zero is actually a period piece on pre World War Two Japan. Um and the um oh godzilla minus one yeah minus one thank you thank you because i was butchering it oh my god (laughs) minus Uh, zero (laughs) minus zero i was just saying minus anything i'm sorry (laughs) minus five oh my god at least you didn't say divide by zero (laughs) divide by zero no oh Uh, oh no we don't know like from what i've heard it's a great um it's a great piece on uh post-war japan and how their government just pretty much fucked them yeah. like they just left them oh, and geez. it was it was on the japanese people to pretty to like kind of bring themselves to, to the from the brink so yeah. cool. and you know very interesting I think, I think i can save you all some time and let you know that the third thing monarch the apple tv godzilla thing uh-huh. uh not worth it oh jeez. Yeah, interesting well okay, there is good and bad there's a lot oh. of bad uh oh. the good is all you know the main actor i can't remember his name and his son playing the same person but across time oh. they're great they are great but you know what's terrible there's not enough monster for the cringe because it's yeah, fine yeah, to have cringe no. in a monster movie no. there's not enough monster and the cringe comes from having 24 to 30 year olds behave like they're 14 year olds Duh. and that just feels mess. weird that's, that's just a like, mess you're not an adult why did you just cast him as a child like it would have it would have worked pain. like it would have been fine Lots of pain Lots yeah. of pain. It, it was, it was so much cringe i don't know what they're gonna do with the final season of uh yeah. what's it called the netflix supernatural show why, why am i forgetting the name of this it's like you can do this Netflix supernatural show. Yeah, it's no the most popular. No, you do. It's the most popular one. It's the D and D based. So, well, initially it was D and D based. Things. Yes, thank you. Stranger Things. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, yeah, movie. they're all old now, aren't they? It's be yeah. A movie. yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be a movie. Or I know that they have one more. Uh, well, initially, yeah. at least the last time I checked, years ago, they had Spoiler one more alert. arc. Spoiler alert! It's a dragon. <laughs> i mean the whole thing has been D D based so. it's all been D D based the only natural step up from a lich is a dragon yeah but it's well vec there's it's still going to be vecna it's going to be vecna bringing about a dragon uh that probably yeah that would be yeah uh, yeah let's be like, like and they're going to be 25 yeah <laughs> jesus it's gonna be fine. christ it's going to be fine because uh, I think most of the actors and actresses are like are 20, 22. Are like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah. Oh, man. I don't know how they're going to do the time skip on that because I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess that they have to live with that for a bit. And that's how they explain the time skip. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I don't know. Age is a weird soup. You know, I've recently started rewatching uh, that 70s show, which is a huge challenge because if you didn't know... Maybe you watched it when it was airing and were confused like most of us. They didn't air that in order. They aired it in recording order. So it was not in chronological order as intended by the writers. Mm. So you have to like look up how to watch this. But the thing that was confusing to me at first was like, oh, wow, these are like 18, 19, 20 year olds playing these like yeah, younger 13, 14 15 people. Year old people. Yeah. And then I read about how uh, the girl that plays Jackie lied about her age because it was the era of people that got cast for young roles were old. Yeah. And like, she was like, gonna get... much older than everybody, right? No, she's much younger. She was oh. like 14. And when she was like signing up for the thing, she was like, oh, yeah, and I'll need one of these things because like some sort of legal person that has to be there to represent a young person. Um, but like they wouldn't have even considered hiring Jackie at the time because she was too young but she's the only one that's the age of her character crazy which is why she's so tiny (laughs) crazy crazy yeah that's ridiculous yeah eric yeah wrap us up 
Yeah, man. Yes, there. I've, what are you been playing? doing, man? What are you Dude, been playing? Well, so the last week has been a lot of a lot of judo training. I'll be honest. I was getting, I was in tournament mode, but I got a little bit of Power World in, and then I went back to <coughs> one of my you know, most beloved games just for a few, a few runs here and there during the week. I thought I I did a few more runs of Cobalt Core, which were kind of fun. Uh, I talked a little bit about that one last week. Mm-hmm. But I've been doing a little bit of Noita again, which is oh. tied for my second favorite game of all time. Uh, and it is so phenomenal. Uh, I think I've told the guys about this many a time, but Noita is based on this engine where every pixel is simulated. And so snow, sand, everything in the game is simulated. So when you destroy something, everything can be destroyed and everything can have an interaction with every other pixel. Nothing is permanent. Yeah, nothing is permanent. It's really cool. You play a wizard, essentially, who's exploring this mountain. And the whole game is an exploration rogue light game where you have these wands. These wands have a number of slots in them. And then you can put spells into these slots but there are specialty spells that can combine with other ones to make some ridiculous combos. And people mm. have done some insane stuff with this. Like one guy figured out how to programmatically create a wand that will dramatically it will teleport him exact distances in the world. How's that? Nope, nope. I nope, nope. By combining <laughs> spell by spell, there, there, you can create infinite loop spells that create infinite damage. You can create all kinds of nonsense. Okay, it's super fun. It, it's it like coding, cool. but in a game. Yeah, but not yeah. quite Factorio levels of coding. Just kind of like coding light. It's very boxes, and they do different things, and you kind of throw I mean, them in and see what happens. Can anyone really play another Factorio without having a bunch of Pokemon to do all the work for you? I, I mean, I, no. No. Now, I will <laughs> say, I don't play it personally, but one of my friends is a Factorio addict. And he was telling me about the new Factorio expansion where you're going to be able to go into space now. That sounds pretty cool. I'm probably not going to check out Factorio, but if you like Factorio, it's going to be more Factorio, and it sounds awesome. More Factorio. Now, I'm going to harvest them, uh, what do you call them? Asteroids. Yeah. yeah. That sounds cool. I don't think I'm going to do it. Now, what I, what I am excited for, there are a bunch okay. of things I am excited for this year, from Hades 2 to no. Stalker 2 to no. all kinds of phenomenal stuff is going to be releasing this year. None of them have a date on them that I know of. But Dwarf Fortress is releasing their adventure I mode. There's going to be some niche bullshit. In April. I cannot <laughs> wait. I've played Dwarf Fortress for way too much of my life at this point since I've been playing it since I was a teenager. It is one of the craziest simulation games in existence, and it has so many cool story aspects to it that just happen. And Adventure Mode is coming in April 2024, and when I play it, I'll tell y'all all about it, and it'll be all wonderful. Fuck about it. And every week, I'll have a new story of me getting into some crazy nonsense with some new village or place that it happens. And it'll it'll just be wonderful. It'll be a great story. It'll be fantastic. It'll be fun it'll be, times. It'll be truly wondrous, wouldn't it? Truly oh, wondrous. I'm looking very forward to it. I'm glad <laughs> that you've shared this, Eric. <laughs> but yeah. I'm glad. Oh. With that said. I, guess I don't we'll, think we have any yeah. more. I guess no we'll wrap it up for the week. I, I, I guess. Yeah. So. Yeah, I guess so. 
Yeah. I mean, if you guys want to go, I mean, it's fine. Yeah. If you guys want to go, it's yeah. fine. Whatever. Yeah, I don't care. Fine. It's like, you don't have to do it. You know how I feel <laughs> about <laughs> Pal World? <Subscribe. laughs> <laughs> well, guys. <laughs> Thank you. I guess a, a huge shout out to, to anybody who's watching. We have people watching the uh, shows now. We have some people who've made it all the way through some episodes. You oh know, they're they're out there and they're Maybe listening. Me. It it might be you actually if you just left an episode on all day. But I think there's like two or three people who have watched each episode now. And nice. so a, a huge shout out to y'all. I, Thanks, I hope- mom. Yeah, hope Dude, y'all are enjoying the shorts. I'm just kidding. I'm just Maybe kidding. it's not your mom, okay? Maybe it's Maybe not. It's Maybe not. it's not. A little bit of hope, okay? He doesn't even know. But yeah. <laughs> Thank y'all for tuning in, and uh, we'll we'll catch you in the next one. Love y'all. Bye. Peace.